that marcos you said the four golden metrics yeah so uh, <laughs> my experience is that sure those are good to have but i never uh, solve issues with those I, I just realized there's an issue which is, is i guess what you want to do in the model so um my ec ec one is uh, concurrency, right? Like how much concurrency do you have? That is that is one very important measure. Uh, throughput, right? Like sustained throughput. Uh, don't go under this. Don't go over this. Um, and uh, latency. Um, I, I need to set up that here. You had that very well done. I remember uh, I suggested you could build uh, a, 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 a graph based on performance schema latency metrics. I will ask you for that panel to integrate into this PMN because that is one lovely panel. Um, so, you know, if your query latency is changing, that is likely. Uh, a bad thing mm, indeed uh, uh, yeah yeah well um, i mean it, i mean they get, they get well changing is not necessarily if it's if it's getting better it's not a bad thing right um but yeah if it's if it's well if it's getting better because the the slower queries are not running a, a good database is a boring database it must be always boring right and to be boring you have to be stable and have a constant throughput and constant response times. So usually if I would see that response times are suddenly all the better without me doing nothing, I will freak out. Yeah. Something yeah. happened. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> perhaps the, the queries are very fast because they're failing or because someone deleted the data. You know? Yeah. Um, and and then the last alert, uh, that's the hard one. Like, well, I would say uptime or, or uh, mm. being actually up, right? Like those would be availability, concurrency, throughput, and latency. Perhaps those are like my favorite four metrics that I will keep an eye. Things should not change in that realm. Well, and look, let, yeah, let, let's let's look at my list um, real quick. I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah. And I'm gonna over. Do you want to? No, I got it. I got it. Look at that. Look at that! I'm, I'm I've already kind of like popped up over your screen. <laughs> oh whoa! Whoa! Even though you're yeah, sharing using, screen, I'm sharing I'm screen. Using. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we we talked a little bit about percentages and the fallacies, you know, and, and why looking at a percentage isn't necessarily a, a good thing, but it can be a good thing in some scenarios. So you need to be mindful of that. But growth rates for me matter quite a bit. Um, and so let let me let me give you an example of this. Let's say that you have a threshold. We'll use your con you know, connections um, and you have it set to, you know, I, I don't know. Let's say you have it set to 9000 or 90 percent and you've got a thousand uh, uh, connections. Right. You know, or uh, 10,000 connections. So you would, you know, obviously, hey, I want to be I want to be warned when I hit that magic threshold. But what? happens if you go from 10 connections to a thousand connections in one day something pretty drastic changed in one day and i want to be made aware of it so mm -hmm. for me i mean i i, I don't even i i want to look at the things that are going to cause a break which is going to be things like we're going to exceed the max threshold but i also want to understand massive or unpredicted growth you know, the, the mantra of any SRE that's out there right now should be predictability, predictability, predictability. You mentioned boring database is a good database. You know what? If you can't predict the growth rate and you're seeing excessive growth, even if it, you know, the system isn't bogged down, 
it is a massive red flag for me. Oh yeah, yeah. something bad is about to happen. Uh, I've seen it with backups. Like uh, you know, someone had like four hundred gigab gigabytes backup, and the next day they have like seven hundred gigabytes backup. Yeah, it's, oh, that's crazy. You didn't realize it for weeks. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I mean, and this goes to everything. So, so, so for me, there's there's almost there's two sets of alerts, right? There is it's going to break or it's broken, fix it. And there is the predictive measure of somebody needs to take some action because this looks really abnormal. And that's where the growth rates come in for me is the abnormal side. Um, but it's also with, with those growth rates, it's also about understanding the baselines and what your expectation is. So you mentioned latency or throughput. Um, and here's the thing. If you know that overall your system generally has um, 10,000 queries a second and it is generally running uh, an average latency or a P99 latency of, let's say, 100 milliseconds. I'm just throwing a number out there. Um, if all of a sudden, like you're at, you know, something different than that, up or down, um, even let, let's say let's say you're 20% higher or lower than that. That's something to me that triggers there has been a significant change in workload, especially if you've been running that way for months or potentially even years. Right. So yeah. if all of a sudden you go from 100 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds, obviously 200 milliseconds is still probably acceptable for a lot of workload and, you know, a lot of queries. And you might not even see a bump in CPU. But that to me is like, oh, oh I need to look. Yeah. Yep. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's important. PMM, PMM can help you establish those baselines. It's it's one of the things uh, that you have to do first when you set up monitoring, right? It's like learn about your baseline, learn about the patterns of your workload. Uh, I remember Baron saying that uh, when they first started setting up, um, what was the the original name? for Baron's uh, Vivid Cortex. Like they started doing Vivid Cortex on a lot of setups and they, they started seeing how spiky all the workloads were and that have, how people was not aware of all the spikes. Uh, so it's not a bad idea to invest some time in establishing the patterns of your workload, the spikes that are actually already there that you don't know about and some good baselines to then set up alerting and establish on those days. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I'm going to look. So so for me, I, I break these down and take these with a grain of salt. But the, the 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 normal metrics that, you know, we're setting thresholds for our CPU, disk space, swap, network throughput, IO latency on the OS. Right. So these are things that, again, if I've got a baseline, I understand I'm going to be looking at what the deviation is, the growth rate is. I'm going to also have some, for lack of a better word, oh, shit metrics. Right. So. If I'm hitting a consistent 90% CPU, that's an oh shit metric for me. Whereas I'm also looking at when I go from 50% CPU to 60% overnight, and that is sustained, then I'm like, oh, that that's a that's a curiosity metric for me that I need to get. Um, but you know, these are standard ones that you'll see measured quite a bit. But again, uh, you know, when you get to stuff like disk space, this is where that percentage can really hit you in, in the side of the head, right? You know, 10% uh, of uh, 10 gigs is a lot different than 10% of a petabyte of data. So again, you've got to have those, uh, those growth rates, that consistency there. Um, from a query perspective, and this is where, you know, Marcus, we, we, we talked about getting that dashboard. Deviations from the normal are the important ones, um, but also net new things. Um, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. you, you will, um, when new things arrive, you, you will have an explanation for those, right? Like you will know, okay, we released a new version. Uh, we got, uh, I don't know, uh, this feature that was not enabled until last week, now it's enabled. So, you like, you know, I remember, I think it was Dijkstra uh, who wrote like a, some security book where it says that the teams in an IT company, they should not be so decoupled. And like the operations team should know about what the development team is doing so they can actually understand what uh, the workload should look like. Yeah, no, no, and, and I mean, I agree with that. The problem is it doesn't happen. I, I talked uh, to. 
<laughs> I know, I know. I mean, I think we're giving advice to people here in general. So I'm just yeah. giving a bit, well, a, a one more piece of advice. So this is where it gets interesting because I think with smaller teams, you, you have that. The larger the teams, the more and the more uh, kind of isolated they are, the more difficult it is. But also the, the larger the environments, the more difficult it is. So think about like, you know, again, go back to that kind of you are an SRE. You have a thousand different development teams that are working um, on their individual things. And your job is to just troubleshoot. You might not necessarily be totally in tune with what releases are happening and what's in each one. Um, especially if there is a continuous deployment type of model where code is constantly being updated. So it can get kind of weird, but looking for those unseen queries and looking for new things. So PMM does have that capability to track new queries and things. So that's something that uh, is useful. That, that, yeah. I remember doing that with PT Query Digest. And, you know, it was quite nice uh, for, for DBAs that precisely they didn't have any insight into the release processes and they were not looking at the, the release notes of their software. So the applications hit them with new queries and they were they didn't have a clue. Yeah. And we did that with PT Query Digest. You can do the same here. And yeah, it's it's a must. Yeah. Um, and so you could like I, I put a question mark here. I've seen this a couple of times when there is a couple of queries that are super critical. You can look specifically for that particular query and look at the latency and target just the one or two that are really critical. Yeah, so I would say I will alert on critical queries or canary queries, right? Like I always give the example, like if I have a float of bands, right? And uh, I have a report that will allow me to dispatch the band, you know, and that report is slow. That is really holding my business back. So that one query must always be, you know, under five milliseconds. Yeah, I will yeah. totally alert on that query. Yeah, but yeah, so I mean, query query side, you know, we, we, you definitely want to look at that. Obviously, we talked a little bit about configuration um, metrics, and th these ones you could probably put more on, but I was lazy, ran out of time, so you can blame me on that. But um, you know, things like you know, hey, you know, the the, the max connections is set wonky, or your buffer pool is set wonky, or your log file size is not correct. These. It's already there. I will show you in our next episode. Are we talking about advisors? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. already have advisors yeah. for this kind of things integrated. Yeah. Given. But these so are. You can enjoy yeah. those without any additional effort. Yeah. So think of these, though, as, as any metric that if you've got a gold standard for what configuration variables or things should be or an idea, if there's deviation you want to know. These are not necessarily going to be critical, drop everything, but they're probably things that you would set up to, to look at. So um, it's a checklist, right? It's a checklist. It's a checklist yeah, that yeah. helps you to verify yeah. things are not enough. So a few other common ones, um, deadlocks. So, you know, a deadlock in and of itself isn't necessarily bad. Excessive ones can be potentially bad. Um, so something to keep in mind, long running or stuck queries. This is another one that I see quite often. So we're, we're talking about, you know, on some of the other query metrics, um, not necessarily what's running now, but an aggregate, right? So we're talking about, you know, you mentioned like the dispatch query, if that gets, you know, oh, it's doubling in time, you know, that could be executed a million times. What we're talking about here is, is there one query that's been running for over, let's say five minutes um, or something like that? And a lot of people will put those sort of metrics in there and will sort uh, definitely alert. And that's more of a emergency hair is on fire. You need to go take a look at this, especially in conjunction with other metrics. So if you're seeing a lot of deadlocks during that time because it's stuck on this long query, if you're seeing high CPU, high IO, um, that's a trigger as well. Um, table database growth rates. Obviously, Marcos, you mentioned backup growth, you know, like, you know, the, the backup size grew. You know, there's all kinds of implications for uh, larger databases and that growth rate. So uh, something to keep in mind. And of course, uh, replication is critical. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think we, we haven't yet even set up a replica here. So I avoided talking about that. But yeah, of course, uh, if you have a replica setup, uh, the the metrics for the replication stuff will be other, right? Like yeah, yeah. But typically, it's 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 is it up and lag? Those are the two big ones generally. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there are others. 
Um, and then, you know, other things that as a DBA or an SRE that I would be paying attention to from the database perspective are any sort of like auditing alerts, which it could be triggered on things that are more security related, right? So somebody dropped a table, somebody did, you know, um, something else. Uh, maybe somebody ran a uh, MySQL dump that shouldn't have. New users were created. Um, those are often things. Yeah, yeah. Um, those things are things you want to look out for. Uh, application response time. Let's be honest. The queries matter, but it is a component of the overall application response time, right? And so I have run into situations where all the queries are fine, but one particular page or function has 14 million of them. And so then all of a sudden that page is awful. Um, so you're going to still impact that pain. And how do you find that out? And then obviously backup, restore and failure. Those are also issues and things we need to look at.